Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a lot about personal finance and investments, but I also cover a little bit about lifestyle. In this video, I'm gonna be doing something that I haven't done in this channel for more than a year, and I'm gonna be cooking. And one of my viewers asked me how my sous vide machine is doing. This viewer told me that I should do an update regarding my cheap sous vide machine. And this was bought in 1111 in 2020 from Lazada. It cost me a little over 2,500 pesos. I think a lot of you are wondering, is that sous vide machine still working? Let's find out. So to start with, let's fill up our pot halfway through with water. This is where we're going to be putting our sous vide machine today. So let's plug it in. You see that the light has actually turned red. That's a good thing. It means that this sous vide machine is still working. So today we're working with a picanha steak. So this picanha is coming from Argentina. You know that picanha is actually the favorite steak of steak god Guga. You know what, I can actually put in the steak directly into the pot without even having to open it. But of course the downside of that would be you not being able to season it properly. One of the downsides of this generic sous vide cooker is the lack of instructions. I've gotten some questions on my page on how to work it. You click on the rightmost button, click it long enough for you to be able to set the temperature. For today, we're going to be working with the temperature of 53 degrees Celsius over 2 hours. And once we have the temperature and the cooking time in place, we can click on the power button just to set everything up. You see the water working here in little waves. That means the machine is starting its process. While we're waiting, that will take probably 10 to 15 minutes. We can now work on the preparations for our steak. So let's check out this picanha. You see that this picanha is actually marbled quite well. This is the perfect size for me to eat solo. And today we're going to be seasoning this steak with some sea salt from McCormick and also going to be seasoning it with pepper. So let's season it with salt generously. Like Adam Ragusea says, don't season the steak, just season the board or in this case a plate. So I'm trying that there. But you know what? I ended up seasoning the steak on both sides anyway. I'm working here with some resealable vacuum seal bags. These are also over one year old. They've been quite durable. I'm not sure how much of it I should be recycling, but as long as it's working, I don't mind. Now that we have the steak in place, let's make use of the Ziploc seal above the plastic. As shared in my old video, I'm still using this manual hand pump. Again, this looks like a lot of work, but actually it just takes a few seconds. You know what? I have some errands to run, so I'm actually going to be putting on the steak. Even if we haven't met the target temperature of 53 degrees Celsius, and since it's slow cooking, you actually don't have to be too precise about the cooking time. Again, sous vide cooking is very forgiving. So I just got back from running my errands. We still have about half of the cooking time. As you see, the machine is still working. But is it producing the type of sous vide cooking that we know and expect? Now while we're waiting, I wanted to share with you why I've enjoyed cooking with sous vide in the last 15 months. So aside from perfect steaks, number one would be cooking exactly where we are right now. Yes, we are in a condo, and typically when you're cooking steak in a condo, you tend to be smoking out the entire place. Your entire furniture will all smell like beef. Most condo dwellers don't have enough ventilation in their unit. So cooking your steak sous vide style is actually a clean, fuss-free way to cook steak in such tight spaces such as condos. So number two. So right now we're just cooking one steak, but actually you can cook many steaks at once and once done with sous vide, you can actually leave your steaks in the freezer to thaw out and cook for a future time. And number three, you can actually cook a wide range of tasty dishes via sous vide. Obviously, steak is my favorite, but there are other dishes that I've come to enjoy and I wouldn't have explored cooking if not for sous vide. So the first of this would be Hainanese chicken. When researching about Hainanese chicken, I didn't really like the whole process of having to boil the chicken. It seemed like such a lengthy, hot process. Even though it was of course a long cook, this allowed me to really seal in the juices without going through all the heat of traditional boiling. And second, another dish that I was able to try out at home would be baby back ribs. 
to the traditional way of cooking baby back ribs would be a long process in a smoker, perhaps overnight, for a few days even. With the sous vide machine, it actually took me more than 13 hours to cook my baby back ribs. Of course, it did have that smoky flavor. After those 13 hours, the ribs were actually falling off the bone. So that's the thing with sous vide. You can actually cook a whole lot of different things, get some tough meats into some tenderizing. So basically, those are the things why I really have come to love sous vide cooking. So enough with this talking piece. It's time to try out our steaks. So I actually still had some time. I'm making here my side dish of marbled potatoes pan fried with rosemary. So a few minutes later and it looks like it's about time to finally take out our steak. So let me just get a good whiff of this beef. Of course the steak doesn't look quite ready yet. It doesn't have that brown char grilled finish that we really like. So in classic Guga style, let's torch finish the steak. So I'm just going to be fast forwarding this. This probably took me about another 5 minutes. On the other side, I'm just going to render the fat. I'm not going to try to really char grill finish the other side since sometimes this tends to overcook the steak. I really want to keep that medium rare finish. And now that that's done, it's the moment of truth. And yes, that is a perfect medium rare. I know some of you don't like it bloody, but guys, you haven't had steak until you've had it this bloody. They say the proof of the cooking is in the eating. Well, the proof of the steak and the sous vide machine is in the blood. Hey guys, I'm ready to dig in. As you see, the sous vide machine still works. So this picanha is a perfect medium rare. So let's try it out. Mm. I haven't had a picanha for a while because Bolzico beef just started raising their prices like crazy. But for this occasion, I made sure that I could get picanha with you guys. Aww. Cheers guys. So this is for me a perfect meal. This is actually better than the steak I ate out at last week. So. Oh, I know I have gout. But that thing's worth it. So for the steak, I'm actually pairing this Bordeaux 2019 Bordeaux Superior from Chateau Gabaret. So the Bordeaux wines in Restaurants are actually not priced too expensive. I mean, of course, there are the top-notch expensive ones. But they're actually a lot under 500 pesos. So this one actually comes at 399 pesos. Typical run-of-the-mill Bordeaux out there. They're probably not too well known. But since they are coming from the Bordeaux heritage, really the, the seat of all wines, even entry-level Bordeaux are really worthwhile. So paired with this picanha, I'm just in heaven right now. And... Ooh. So this meal is about a thousand pesos. So if you were to eat this out, you would probably spend 4,000 to 5,000 pesos, if not even more. So, so thanks for giving me the opportunity to try out my old sous vide machine. It definitely works and I'm going to enjoy the rest of this night. Um, if you like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching guys and cheers!